Hi, fourth graders. Mrs. Tawil again. I'm back with Sir Lancelot, who's trying to play the piano. Thank you for helping me. You can go now. He's a cat. What do you expect? All right, today's lesson two in our O Susanna unit. So we're going to begin by reviewing the song. Again, the better you know it, the easier it will be to write your own lyrics to tell your story. So we're going to do this once echo style, and then we'll do it all together. I'll start, here we go. I came from Alabama with my banjo on my knee. Your turn. I came from Alabama with my banjo on my knee. Line two. I'm going to Louisiana, my true love for to see. Your turn. I'm going to Louisiana, my true love for to see. Line three, the one first of our two silly lines. It rained all night the day I left the weather, it was dry. Your turn. It rained all night the day I left the weather, it was dry. Line four, the second of the silly lines. The sun's so hot, I froze to death. Susanna, don't you cry, your turn. The sun's so hot, I froze to death. Susanna, don't you cry. And now on to line five, the refrain. Remember that the refrain is the part of the song that repeats, and it uses the same lyrics and melody every time you sing it. So here we go, I'm going first. Oh, Susanna, oh, don't you cry for me. everybody let's do it together here we go here's our introduction ready I come from Alabama with my banjo on my knee I'm going to Louisiana my true love for to see it rained all night the day I left the weather it was dry the sun's so hot I froze to death Susanna don't you cry oh Susanna Before we move on to our main lesson, I just want to remind you about the brainstorm. I hope you've been working on it a little bit at a time each day. Remember, you need to tell me as many details about you as you can because that will make writing your song easier. And you don't have to keep all the information smushed into the bubble. You can extend over these lines. And if you find that are, there are more things that you want to tell me than what's just listed here with these bubbles, you can always add an extra bubble or two. Again, the more you talk about, the more information you'll have to put in your lyrics. Now, let's move on to our main lesson today. You need to have page two. And you'll also need to have your pencil. So if you want to pause this to get everything ready, go ahead. All right, page two, folk songs. We need to understand what these are. And as I said in lesson one, every country, every culture around the world has its own folk songs. In fact, you already know some folk songs. If you've been at Carpenter and you've attended my sing-alongs at the end of the year, we've always included one that goes like this. songs ever. You also may have learned this little folk song when you were younger. Yankee Doodle went to town a riding on a pony. He stuck a feather in his cap and called it macaroni. Yes, that is a folk song. And one of the most famous 
biggest folk songs in the whole world ever written. And sadly, we don't know who wrote it because the person forgot to put their name on the paper. How many times has your teacher told you to do that? You don't want to forget to do that because this song would have made its author millions of dollars if only their name had been on the paper. Have you heard this one? Of course you have. Twinkle Little Star. Well, today we're going to go through and find out what makes music a folk song. So if you'll read along with me, and you'll need your mark, your pencil for this. I'm going to use a marker only because it shows up better on camera. And we will be pausing from time to time. So here we go together. The first sentence gives you the definition of a folk song. Here we go. Folk songs are the traditional songs of a country or culture. No one knows who created most of the folk songs that have ever been sung or played. Their composers are anonymous. Now, if you notice the word anonymous is in italics, would you take your pencil please and circle the word anonymous? Going on. The melody and words of a folk song develop over time. So most folk songs are old. And again, old is in italics. So with your pencil, would you please circle the word old. Many songs express a people's history and are linked to a culture. Those italicized words, linked to a culture, they're extremely important. So with your pencil, please circle those. One person makes up a song and other people hear the song and learn to sing it. These people in turn sing the song for others who learn the words and melody. In this way, the folk songs are passed orally from person to person, from place to place, and from generation to generation. Boys and girls, again, what's in italics? The words passed orally. And I'm sure at one point or another, your teachers have talked to you about oral tradition. So please circle the words past orally. I'm going to pause from reading for a minute to ask you a question. In your family, is there maybe a funny story or an interesting story or a sad story or some story that your grandparents have told you, that they told their children and then their children told you, that's passing your oral history. There's a lot to learn from these kinds of stories. Going on, as a result, most folk songs have to be simple, easy to learn and easy to remember. So, if you've seen the word simple in italics, please circle it. Did you experience how simple O oh Susanna was? You have five lines of music that are almost exactly alike, except for the last two notes. And then only one line that's completely different from everything else. That makes that song so easy to learn. We're going to continue reading with the words most American folk songs. I'll give you a minute to find our place. Here we go. Most American folk songs have a stanza form, which consists of a verse alternating with a refrain. The verses 
tell a story so that each verse is different. Now, you see some words in italics again? Tell a story. And it's important that we circle those words. The refrain repeats using the same melody and lyrics each time. The major influences on American folk music come from Great Britain, Europe, and Africa. Songs written by professional composers are considered folk music if the songs become part of a people's traditional music. For example, we know who wrote This Land is Your Land. It was Woody Guthrie. But other folk songs, like Yankee Doodle, we're really not 100% sure of who the author was. And again, poor Twinkle Little Star, we'll never know who wrote that one. Now, to remember these characteristics, there's an easy way to do this. We're going to go back and use the words that you circled. You'll need your marker and your pencil. So the first characteristic that we circled was the word anonymous. Using your marker, can you write the A of anonymous as a capital letter and then write the rest of the word with your pencil? So it looks like this. A N O N Y M O U S. Got it? Okay. The next word that we circle old. So again, with your marker, please make a capital O with your marker and then the L and the D with your pencil. Old. Good job. Probably the most important characteristic that we circled is linked to a culture. So we're going to write a capital L and then we're going to finish writing it in pencil. Linked to a culture. We'll give you a little bit of time to finish that one. Linked, L-I-N-K-E-D, the word to, T-O, a, a, and then culture, C-U-L-T-U-R-E linked to a culture. Now, at the time a lot of these old folk songs were written, people didn't know how to read music, and sometimes they didn't have access to books. So they learned things by hearing it. You had music in front of you when I taught this, but you also listened and echoed what I sang. That's the way a lot of people learned these folk songs in the past. So number four characteristic is passed orally. It means it passed from somebody singing it, not from being written down. So please make your capital P with your marker. Passed orally. P A S S E D, a 
and the next word orally, O-R-A-L-L-Y. Orally actually literally means by mouth. Almost finished. Number five, the next italicized word that you circled was simple. Capital S with your marker and then the word. Simple. S-I-M-P-L-E. Simple. And the final important characteristic of a folk song is that all folk songs tell a story. Now, in O. Susanna's case, it was a silly story, but it was still a story. So, capital T with your marker tells a story. Tells, T-E-L-L-S, a story, S-T-O-R-Y. Now one thing I know about fourth graders, you love to know when you can break rules. I mean, right? Right? Sometimes it's, uh, sometimes it's fun when you have permission. You should always follow the rules, but sometimes in music, we give you permission to break them. And in the case of O Susanna, O Susanna actually breaks a few rules. First of all, is it anonymous? Nope. We know exactly who wrote it because he wrote it down. It was Stephen Collins Foster. So let's, with your marker, just draw an X through the number one next to anonymous. Is it old? Of course it's old. It's over 175 years old. That's old. Is it linked to a culture? Absolutely. It was linked to a culture because it was first linked to the cultures on the East Coast and then as it traveled across the country, and we'll be singing about this next week, it became a part of the California Gold Rush culture. Was it passed orally? Not entirely, because Stephen Collins Foster wrote it down and published it. So that's one other rule that you can break. So you can X out number four. It doesn't always have to be passed orally. Is it simple? Duh. What could be more simple than all those lines of music sounding almost exactly the same? And does it tell a story? Of course. It's a silly story. It's kind of nonsensical, but yeah, it tells a story. Now, there was a reason that I had you do this like this. I always like to help students remember things. So if you want to remember the six characteristics of a folk song, we're going to make up a fake website. This does not exist for real. But I think some of you have heard of one of the very first email websites ever, AOL. Well, if you look at these, you can see using these letters, we can think of folk songs at AOL.pst. A O L. P S T. It's kind of just a memory device to help you remember these. A for anonymous. O for old. L linked to a culture. Dot. P pastorally. S simple. 
and T tells a story. Congratulations. You've completed our second le lesson on our folk song project, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Don't forget, finish your brainstorm so we can get working on that song about you. Have a magical musical day. Bye.